tuning in. Listen, before we dive in and do what we need to do, I want to ask everybody if you will please like and share this video. All right. Or as I like to say on Derek Huggins in the morning, like and share. All right. Like and share. I need y'all to like and share. Right. OK. Let everybody know that we are here. We're on. We have a great discussion with these amazing, amazing young men and women that are joining me for the conversation today. And I'm uh, really, really excited. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and dive right on in and do our first introductions. All right. This first young lady that we're going to bring on the screen. She is our uh, board president. El Presidente. Oh, La Presidente. What did you say? You don't say it in Spanish? Y'all got to help me with that. Anyway, her name is Dwanique Smith. What's up, Dwanique? Hey, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> so in Spanish, do you say, I know you don't say L because L is like the masculine tense, it's, right? Isn't it like La, the? La, La Presidente? The right. President? Well, yeah, that's so you. I don't know. So, so I, I'm, I'm loving this orange. It's just. Like, it's you. orange is giving, to... like it's giving thank festive, you. it's giving sunshine on a, is it? on a cloudy day. It's giving pop, 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 pop. Like, is it right. giving sherbet? No, it's not giving sherbet. It's no? it's giving. Okay. We, we like it. We but like it's it. giving. It's not... We like it. It's giving. We, we like it. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce our next um, advisory board <laughs> member. <laughs> this one, wonderful young lady is out in California. Y'all, we got every... Almost every time zone represented um, in America on this thing tonight. So she is out in Los Angeles, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, California. And that is Miss Kayla. Kayla, now, I don't want to mess up your name. So tell me. Hello, uh, everybody. Hello. It's kind of breaking up, but I'm here. <laughs> hey, girl. I hear you. I just don't see your face. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? I hear yes, you, but I don't see you. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Okay. See, we want to see your beautiful face because you were giving us face. So we want to see your face. <laughs> Just yes, giving hi, face. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, all right. So without further ado, this young man, Bastrop, Louisiana. How many of y'all know where Bastrop is on the map? If I gave you, if I said I'm going to give you $10,000 right now, point out Bastrop, Louisiana on the I'm going to pray real hard and just. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm going to be praying like, Lord, help me. Let me let me get it right, Jesus. Let me point to the right thing. All right. That is Mr. Kyron Kyle's. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, he's still tickled. So, I'm sorry. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? <laughs> Uh, we are Northeast Louisiana. Uh, there you go. We are like 15 minutes away from Monroe. Okay, so there you have it. So they still wouldn't know where that's it. But you know, I just want to let y'all know, <laughs> like, where it catch us northeast of Louisiana. That's where we at. But okay, hey, so Northeast hey, Louisiana is in the house. Hey, good to see you, Kyron. All right, <clears> and <throat> certainly last but certainly not least, this young man is in the DMV area. Uh, over there on the East Coast, rep repping the East Coast hard. And that's my friend, my brother, Mr. Ronald J. <clears throat> East now, Coast? Let me tell y'all, when people put the, their middle initial in their name, that usually means they got some money. <laughs> so, Ronald, I'm going to send you a cash app request for $2,000 when we get off Ooh. here. <laughs> Let's see how much you get back. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny before we get started i want to say hey to everybody that's joining us in the chat now listen chat people this is a millennial and gen z situation so we need y'all active like i need y'all running it up all night or run it up run it up run it up you know what i'm saying don't be over here acting like you don't know what time it is i need <laughs> you to run this chat up blow it up so shout out to some of our avidity uh, awards team members Robin McGee, she is a coordinator of our background vocalist, and she is also called the True Alto Baby. She, if you have not heard her sing, you will hear her at the eighth annual Avidity Awards taking the stage with none other than Mr. B. Slade himself. So y'all check her out. So shout out to Robin. And then we've got Tiffany Hayes French, who is our director of artist relations for the Avidity Awards. It's in the chat. I see you, ma'am. Good to see you. And uh, let's see who we got. John Walker Jr. Y'all, John is going to be calling our show this year. <laughs> Y'all know I must really believe I got a lot of faith in John. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of faith in John because I'm letting John call my show. Praise All right, year. brother. I am and, proud of uh, my brother. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, so he's the director of uh, logistics for us for the team. So good to see you, uh, John. 
And listen, my sister from another Mr. Miss Gretchen Irvin Elder is in the building. She is uh, <laughs> representing New Orleans. So she is a native down there and will be attending all the events. Listen, she she like, brother, I need a I need a ticket, brother, to all the events, all of them. <laughs> I'm like, I know that's right, sis. So my sis went and ran it up. So I gotta give her some love because she went and brought tickets. She buy a t shirt. She bought she like she doing the whole thing. So shout out to her. All of you guys, hey, Charles and Elton. Oh, Elton is our director of sponsor relations for the Avidity Awards. I'm glad to see Team Avidity in this building. That's what I'm glad to see. I'm loving it. Glad to see all of you guys in here. So I appreciate you guys and um, all of you. So, yes, he was trying to stay hidden, but I would not let him hide in the name of Jesus. Come on out. That's all, that's all right. You can't hide. Come on here. All right. So anyway, I love all you guys. Uh, Donnell Russell, who is also an uh, artist and down there in the New Orleans area. Shout out to him on um, in the chat as well. So I appreciate you guys. Now, listen, I need y'all doing this all night in the chat. I need you to run this chat up. If you haven't already, I need you to like and share this video because we're going to have an amazing discussion with these amazing four people. All right. So without further ado, let's go and get this thing started. Right. OK, so you're like, what is the next gen? Like, what is this? What is this? You know, Derek Huggins, what are you doing now? Because, you know, anybody that knows me, you know, I've always I'm coming out with something like I'm popping up with something new. And um, so I thought to do this next gen because I believe that millennials and Gen Z have next. And I think it's important that we emphasize that. And so it started out as a way for us to bring in millennials and Gen Z and their ideas into what we're going to do with the show and our show planning. But then I thought. Why just limit it to that? Like, let's just take it all the way and go to the top. So y'all be on the lookout and coming soon, even after the Avidity Awards, we got some next gen initiatives that we're going to be popping up with, some virtual shows and all kind of stuff that we're going to be doing. So, but I wanted to start this because I think it's important that any entity, organization, church, whatever, has to have, in my opinion, next generation thinkers, leaders, forerunners, right? And that's what these young people are. You know, they are smart. They are creative, they're talented, and I think that any organization that lacks this kind of leadership in this, to me is going to go extinct. That's just what I think. That's what I believe. And so y'all here, millennials, to keep us on our toes, y'all right? You Gen Zers. And one thing I like about y'all generation, especially the Gen Z generation, they like, Gen Z, like, we don't care. Like, you know what? <laughs> we said what we said. <laughs> we said. <laughs> What we said, and it ain't changed. All right, no, but anyway, so I appreciate that. Um, and so that's why we started this. And so I'm excited because when I called Dwanique, and uh, Dwanique um, accepted the position of being the president of this board that we put together, and I really appreciated her because she just had this all kind of started because I was talking to her about some other stuff, and then I was just hearing her ideas about the show, and I was like, you know what. <laughs> Yes, go on. You're full of ideas. Run this. Yes, <laughs> run this. So um, I appreciate her for accepting and um, putting this all together. And then she contacted Kayla. I talked to Ronald. We got Kyron on board. And then here we are. So, so good to see everybody again tonight. So that's why I started this next gen. I believe that it's important to have your voices front and center when we're making preparations and planning, um, especially for what we're doing with the Avidity Awards. And so I appreciate you guys willing to help us do what we're here to do. You know what I'm saying? And I believe, I really do truly believe this, that with you guys on board and helping us steer this ship, we, we're going to get what we need to get. How about that? All right. So, of course, you can see uh, our friend Roger Purvis, who's one of our Hall of Fame. ND Gospel Music Hall of Fame uh, uh, inductees this year. Uh, Mary Kyle's, that's got to be kin to this Kyle's boy that's on here with this orange shirt on in the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> So good to see all of you again. Thank you guys for joining us. So let's go ahead and get started in talking about your roles, what you guys are going to be doing with the show, um, with the Avidity Awards. Are you guys excited? Yes. Very. Yes. Very much. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I got to tell you guys this. First of all, the Avidity Awards has been dubbed the biggest night in independent gospel music. And I think when you guys get to New Orleans, you're going to see why that is. I I'm going to tell you something. This is not your round the corner award show production, ladies and gentlemen. This is the real deal. Holy Field is going down. All right. So when you walk into that building, 
from the time you walk in to the time you leave, I'm we have worked. I'm telling I'm telling you, the team and I have worked entirely just to make sure that we are meeting the demand of what our type, you know, our moniker, right? We want to make sure that you guys really feel like it's the biggest night. You understand? For you guys. So uh, I want to talk about what each of you guys are doing. And I want you to talk about your excitement uh, for the show, um, being a part of this board. So first of all, before we do that, introduce yourselves, then tell us about <laughs> your level of excitement. And of course, I'm going to start with La Presidente. That's mother. No now, I know she's young, president. but she's mother. Mother. <laughs> <laughs> <Do I expect? laughs> Just cut it out. Hi, everyone. My name is Duanique Smith. Um, I'm really excited when he asked me to become the president. I just, I was like, sure, like, let's see what God has. I'm really excited for the award show. I do believe this is going to be one of the biggest nights, well, biggest weekends of the year. Um, I'm, I'm believing God to, to just work through Derek and through the whole team. And I'm ready to have fun with y'all. So if you don't have your tickets, get your tickets. Cause you don't want to miss out. You don't want to be on social media. Like, dang, I should have went. Cause we told you to go. Yes. All right. Well, you know, what, you, I was supposed to be telling y'all something about me too, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause I was like, well, okay, <laughs> she's done. <laughs> well, what you, well, I'm a gosh. I'm a gosh. I am also a singer songwriter. I will be performing at the pre-show as well. Um, I have a song called Expose. You guys can go check that out. Yeah, pretty excited. Well, we're glad that you're on the team. Thank you for agreeing to uh, lead the charge, and I uh, just appreciate you. Don't so, without quit this mother, Dwayne, y'all gonna quit with that. Period. <laughs> so, Dwayne, uh, real quick, what people may not know is, um, I actually saw you. I impromptu got dragged into uh, being a panelist for the Rhythm of Gospel Awards, and when it was in Dallas uh, by Lonnie who Lonnie is our chief of staff at the Avidity Awards and uh, Tiffany French had good old like Tiffany, good old literally Tiffany. right before the show was supposed to start they were like hey can you come and uh, do this panel and uh, give your expertise or whatever and I was like okay sure <laughs> sure <laughs> so anyway um, I saw Dwanique perform and um, she killed it and I was so impressed that I Thank asked you. her you're welcome and um, I, I, so I was so impressed with her that I asked her or I told her, hey, if you want it, there's a spot on our pre-show for you. And she accepted. And that's how we kind of got started. So I just wanted to put that out there, too. All right. So let's go to Miss Kayla. Kayla, tell everybody where you're from, all about you, and all that good stuff. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Kayla Lessier. I'm from Los Angeles. However, I went to Langston University. So that's how me and DW met. And she um, brought me onto this. So I'm just here to help wherever anything is needed. <laughs> I'm here to help. I'm also a singer, songwriter. We used to sing together in college. And I'm singing out here at churches and everything. I'm also an R&B singer. So I just, I'm, yeah, I'm just here to help wherever. I'm loving it. Yep. I'm loving it. Kayla, Kayla is being humble. Kayla does everything, y'all. Like media, everything. Kayla is Kay Kayla is it. I, I work in a production field for like movies, TV shows. I'm a freelance production assistant for a lot of companies. And uh yeah. Oh, so so what you so basically what you saying is <laughs> basically basically <laughs> Basically, what you're saying is, I'm gonna pull you in so you can be one of my associate producers for the award show. Oh, okay, praise God. Amen. Hey, that's, that's what you're saying. All right, that's she what you're saying. Keep being real humble. Keep being real humble. See, y'all, I gotta, I gotta warn y'all in advance. See, I got my late bishop spirit on me, and so anytime he would hear someone could do something, he'd be like, "All right, the Lord that called you, you gonna be over it. Let's go." <laughs> I take that position. I love it. All right, so let's go to Mr. Kyron. Kyron, so Kyron, you are tell them about yourself, where you're from. All oh, all right. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Kyron Kyle. Like I say, I am from the small town of Bastrop, Louisiana. I am a traveling event photographer. I've done concerts, church anniversaries, mostly. My main focus is church events. I've done everything all the way up to funerals actually yeah that yeah mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> same thing i said same thing i said but you know hey 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 they asked i came but um <laughs> i'm excited to be a part of this this is something that i prayed about a long time ago and again 
shout out to my boy Lonnie because he brought this to me. I didn't even know what was going on until he brought it to me. And like I told you, I had did everything. I left it up there and I got an email back and then it went to a phone call. And now here we are on the good old team of amazing black folks. All this color, this melanin, it's just beautiful. It's good. The Lord is pleased. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Kyrie, so Kyrie, yeah. you're gonna be coming in as our interim uh to intern photographer. So you're gonna be covering the events and things like that with your lens and, and getting that. So I'm excited about that and having you guys on board and that but you are hilarious. I just wanna say that. Uh, oh yeah, so, this is just the beginning of it. Oh oh I'm I'm I can't wait. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. I, I I'm ready. So last but certainly not least, we got my friend Mr. Ronald McCray. No, I'm sorry, Ronald J. McCray. J. McCray. Yeah. that middle initial. That middle initial. Get twisted. Because he is very rich. Okay. <laughs> he is very rich. You know, rich people put their initial in there. That means they are very rich. You better speak that thing. Listen, receive it right now. Lift your hands right now. Lift, 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 lift. All right, all right, you gotta receive it. All right, so Ronald, tell us everybody about you and uh, where you're from, and tell them what you're gonna be doing with the show this year. So I am holding down the DMV area. Shout out to those who either are in the DMV or from the DMV. Um, I am a husband, father, <laughs> artist, um, singer, songwriter, photographer, and a bunch of other things as well. Uh, one fun fact about me is I love, love, love Starbucks coffee. If you ever meet me and you want to be on my good side, get me a white chocolate mocha grande. Grande. It's very important. With whipped cream and you'll be my best friend. So just wanted to put that out there for everybody. Um, and I will be singing during the pre-show. And I will also be joining Kyran as a photographer for the Avidity Awards. But a little bit further, though, Ronald, you're not just going to be doing event photography. You're actually coordinating our event photography. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. That part. Yeah. So y'all, I, listen. You see these millennials and these Gen Zers, you know, trying to do all this extra, like <laughs> modesty, like you know what I don't want to tell nobody what I really be doing and stuff. You know, <laughs> you know, I mean, I really am. Comes mom, off, you know, <laughs> it comes off like kind of boastful. Like you know, you be like, how much do I say? How much? You know, people looking at you stank. Well, right. see, I think that okay, you would have a point. I think you would have a point if. You were just like randomly saying this stuff about yourself, but I asked you to tell us what you do. And you know, sometimes you, you just uh, you let out a little bit, and then you let the rest be seen. Like you know. Yeah, I got you. All right, all right, all right. I'm, yeah. all right, I'm the yeah. newbie. This is my first time at the <laughs> Avidity Awards, and I'm I'm really excited. Like I'll I'll say this: the people that I've interacted with, from Derek to his team, have been incredibly hosp hospitable and kind and friendly like so i can only imagine how much more the experience will be when we get there so i'm excited kind kindness matters Listen, robin said this so i mean so well she said we respect gifts and greatness around these parts and that's true and it's so and i love to hear ronald that you said that you felt you feel that warmth and uh love because one of the things that i'm always stressing to our executive uh board when we meet on mondays I, about the show i always tell them we want to make sure that when the artists come to our show, that they feel um, that not only that they are welcome, but they feel love. They feel a certain sense of camaraderie. And I want us to be known as the customer service friendly show. Mm. And um, one of the things I used to teach my um, when I used to work in corporate America, I used to teach my teams that customer service is not always about, uh, you know, niceties in terms of, you know, when you're exchanging. But it's about a general mindset and attitude. Um, you have certain corporations like Chick-fil-A as a part of their corporate structure. They, when you say thank you, what do they say? My it pleasure. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. Right? My pleasure. So that's a part of their brand culture. And that's what I, I believe. I believe that our brand culture should be, we appreciate anyone. Whatever role you have in our show, whatever stake you have, if you are a vendor, if you're a part of the crew, if you're a staff member, right? If you're a member of the theater staff, if you're on the production team, if you're an artist, if you're a sponsor, everybody should be treated with respect and everybody should be treated with love. And I think that's been one of the hallmarks of why our show has done so well for so long um, and why we continue to just kind of raise the bar. And we want to be that standard. We want to be we want to set the standard for everybody else to follow. I've been to all the major award shows. 
secular and gospel. And I can tell you, I I know for a fact the Vidity got them beat when it comes mm -hmm. to hospitality and love and respect. So I'm just saying that. And I said what I said, period. <laughs> it ain't changing over here. All right. So now that we know what a two out you guys are doing, and uh, I'm excited to see you guys in your element um, at the show, let's talk a little bit about um, why we're really here. And that's to talk about the, um, how millennials and Gen Z will impact not only gospel music, but music <coughs> generally and this industry and why I think that's important. And I want to start the conversation here. I was looking at some stats and trends because, first of all, as y'all know, a lot of you that know me, a lot of y'all in the chat know me. I am a kind of like the 21st century renaissance man. So I do all kind of stuff from graphics to hosting TV shows and award shows and everything in between. And one of the things that I do is I'm a radio promoter. So I promote music um, to radio for my artists. And then I also promote our music, uh, our clients' music to what we call the DSP. So the digital service providers like Spotify, Apple Music, et cetera. And one of the things that I, I realized when it comes to the Gen Z um, generation and the millennial generation, the way you guys consume music is so different than those that are your, that are older than you. And so one of the things I want to ask y'all before we get into this thing, I want to just do like this icebreaker question. Well, it's not really an icebreaker question. I'm just going to dive right in and get to the nitty gritty because I'm, I'm kind of messy and petty. So I want to ask y'all a question. <laughs> I want to know what is what do you guys see as the problem in gospel music from your vantage point? The problem? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the head tilt for me. It's the head tilt. That is messy. <laughs> I'm waiting on you at the door. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I, I really think that the problem, or if there, if we can say it's a problem, I think it's a problem. Um, some of the older people kind of gatekeeping or not really necessarily wanting to help us because we are younger and the sound of gospel music has changed. And so I think that them, some of them not wanting to help, I think that's kind of a problem because we do need those mentors to help guide us. Like we do, things are changing, but there are still some things that we can incorporate that came before us. Okay. Okay. Now, see, Dornick gave me that. See, you, you, I tell you the president. You gave me a presidential answer. You Praise know, God. In, in a minute, you're going to go back and kiss babies on the rope line. I, I see how you doing it. Okay, I see oh, how man. you get down. Let me go on and bring, let me bring Kayla into this conversation. <laughs> Kayla, oh, let me that's ask funny. you. <laughs> that's funny. So, so Kayla, to, in your vantage point, just from where you are, and, and you are someone that works in media, television productions, and things like that. What do you think the issue is when it comes to gospel music, especially as it as it relates to how to get Gen Zers and millennials more engaged? Why do you think there's such a drop off with y'all's generation? Hmm. Um, I would say maybe our generation looks at gospel music as like boring and not fun and not like I don't know because. <laughs> Yeah, Kayla, I love you. All right, let me back up. Hold on, let me calm down. Let me calm down. Now I'm your whole ring game. I'm playing. I'm just playing. But but no, Kayla, tell me. No, seriously, you said no. You said something that just struck me in the heart because this is something I've been saying forever. Okay, go back. I'm sorry, tell... a call came through. Oh no, it's okay. So you, the reason I was going up about what you said about boring, okay. you said you think that they see it as boring. Possibly. Okay. Are you saying possibly or it is? I don't, me, I don't consider it to be boring, but just like from people from my generation, like even the reason why they don't come to church, they just don't think it's a safe place for them and they don't feel comfortable going mm. and like listening to the music because they're so used to the secular music and like the, those type of frequencies that when they come here, they just aren't used to it. And yeah, I would say that. <laughs> okay. No, that's a great answer. I, I appreciate that you hit something right on the, um, the nail right on the head. And I'll expound yeah. on that. But I want to hear next from Mr. Kyron. Kyron, from your perspective. Now, I don't know if y'all mind telling y'all's ages on here. Or y'all scared? I don't mind. Oh, I don't mind. 
Okay, so look, Dwanika looking like, mm -mm. <laughs> I, I know I'm a millennial, but I'm not telling my age. See, that's why you mother. See, this is exactly why you are mother. Because <laughs> it don't matter how young you are, you are mother. You're giving us mother teas today. So you know, mother <laughs> it don't want to tell her age, y'all. She's still I don't mind. I'm, tw I, I'm 24. I'll be 25 next week. Okay, 24, 25 next week. Kayla, what about you? 22. 22. All right. Kyron. 29. 29. All right. Dr. Ronald. Jay I'll, I'll be 26 for the night. <laughs> oh my God. I'm gonna oh, want you to spit the this line demon out right here. Oh, spit it out man. right here. I'm 36. 36. <laughs> yeah. So you are on the millennial side. Mm -hmm. The rest of you, Gen Z. Okay. I see it. I see it. Okay, I'm here for it. So the reason why I asked you guys your age is because I really think that what I well, I'll I'll I'll, I'll hold that. I'll hold that. But Kyra. Tell us why, in your opinion, you think gospel music is not having the reach or appeal that it should have for your generation. Uh, for one, uh, let's see, how can I say it? Um, so coming from someone that was born in, in the 90s and has watched the transition, I was around when it was physical copies. And then I was a part of the digital copy era. And the digital copy is like, if it's not your fave, you're not going to hear it. Because there's so many people in these small areas that deserve to be pushed <clears throat> like other people, but they're not getting it because they don't have that social media platform. Like, like the Clark sisters, the Ricky Dillers, the James Fortunes, the, Cor the Kirk Franklins, you know, you see them and then you have the digital platform that they worked hard for, but they built that base. And then you have these people around us that deserve, if not that and more, you know, they don't have that same push. So I say the digital era is kind of where it kind of fell off. Mm. It's kind of the disconnect between what I grew up with to what I listen to now. Okay, let me follow up with the, a question then. So you said you feel like the the, the, the uh, drop off happened when when the digital uh, media came into play, but tell me why you think it has such an impact with that drop off. Um, I would say with that is because for one, like I say, we look at the Okay, let's do it like this. Look at Kirk Franklin and then look how he's still up with digital, but look at Tone. Perfect example. When Tone was around, you know, yeah, we had the lime wire and all that, the illegal stuff that we could have went to jail for, that we should have went to jail for. But you know, hey, the law was merciful and kind to us. But you look at where not saying where he fell off, but he was when the physical copies were still a push. So it's like, how can I put this? All right, so it's like we have those Apple Music, Spotify, and all that, but let's just say some of the people that we know that deserve it don't have the money for the production for it. And, okay. and then you have some people that be like, okay, I'm willing to chance it, but I'm skeptical of what everybody else is going to say about it. We can say it's good because we have an ear for music. But then you hear those people that are just for the oohs, the ahs, the runs, and the beats. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a uh, T the top, T the top, T the top. Hmm. All right, let me let me let me bring uh Ronald J McCray, millionaire. Please, please do not forget the J. Please, don't. Ronald J. I am very rich, McCray. McCray. Let me bring him into the conversation. <laughs> so, Ronald, why do you? So let let me hear from you. Why do you say or do you feel that there is a divide when it comes to Generation Z mm. and millennials, especially when it comes to gospel music? Mm. Y'all gonna love what I got to say about this because I got a lot to say. But go ahead, Ronald. I want to hear from you. Um, I think 
I think this is layered. It's, this is definitely an onion of a question. I think part of it is because generationally speaking, um, I think people have a different understanding of what the gospel is and what it means to them. Um, for like the millennials um, and generations, like the generation before ours, which I think is X, like a lot of us were raised That's in me. the church, like you. A lot of us were raised in the church, but like a lot of Gen Zs and younger, um, a lot of them, um, in my experience and conversations with people, a lot of them were not. And so I think before people like hear gospel music, the representation of the gospel is the people that they interact with. And so if their interactions with people are poor and negative, I think what Dwayne kind of mentioned earlier, they're going to turn a deaf ear to the music. And so I think we have to be the living epistles that the Bible tells us to be um, and show them like the, um, the, the God in us, the, the love of God that was shed abroad for all of us. You know, the John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The kindness that we demonstrate to one another, the preferring of one another over ourselves and catering to the poor and, you know, taking care of the widow and the orphan, like, and showing up in the world's needs as opposed to just standing on the sidelines and critiquing what the world is doing wrong. So I think millennials and Gen Z are like, well, what is the relevance of the church? You know, what is the relevance of the Christian community in our world today? And I think they're waiting to see that. Mm. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm going to give you gold stars for that. Somebody give him gold stars in the chat. That's good stuff. And really, all of you guys hit, because I'm going to try to surmise everything all of y'all said, because all of you guys really, to me, hit what's going on. I think we have a couple things that are, are at issue right now. One of the things, to your point, Ronald, um, is Gen Zers and millennials just have a different worldview when it, just when and how they consume everything in life. It's not even just about how they see God. It's how they see God. It's how they see family, connections, relationships, uh, work, the whole nine. And I think, to your point, we don't have enough of the older generation's um, appreciation for their perspective. It's almost kind of like, well, I am older than you, therefore, and thus, you should just listen to me. Y'all shut up and hear and do what we tell y'all to do, right? Not really trying to understand your perspective and where you're coming from, or uh, something else I see that's a um, trend is they just dismiss y'all's feelings outright as like, it's not relevant. So if you say, um, Kayla just said, a lot of millennials and Gen Zers think church is boring and thus, by extension, gospel music, right? And she also yeah. mentioned a lot of the music that the Gen Zer and millennial generations um, like, it has a more urban and more updated feel. And this is the thing I keep trying to impress to people in gospel radio, especially. You have a lot of gospel, older gospel radio programmers who are in the baby boomer generation, right? And they're trying to program music for today, but it's like almost like they're still doing it in the way they did it in the 80s and 90s. And music is something that continues. I always tell people, music is a living organism. It continues to evolve mm. and change and grow. And if you don't learn how to grow and change and evolve and adapt, then you become extinct. And let's just real quick, I'll give you all this real quick brief history lesson. When you study music, let's just go back from the 1950s to today. Every decade, there is a there was a shift in the culture of music. In the fifties, you had doo was real prominent, right? In the sixties, ushered in the Motown sound for that decade, like they were the king of music at that time. Then the seventies came in; it was the disco era. The disco era, you had groups like Blondie and Donna Summer and those kinds of groups. Then in the eighties, right, you started getting in the pop, rock, hip hop. All those three genres started really kind of taking a flow and a pause or whatever are, are coming forward. Then in the 90s, you see every decade it's like a new wave that just kind of ushers in. And my point there is, if you are a person that is not on top of the pulse of where the music is shifting and changing, then you're not going to be relevant to people who are coming behind you. This is why I said I think it's important for us to do what we're doing with this with this board, with this advisory board. My, my goal, my task to all of you is to help the Avidity Awards 
stay fresh and relevant in what we're presenting to the people. So that's not just what we're presenting on stage, right? In terms of the content and sound, but it also means what are we doing outside of the stage, right? Like how are we impacting the community? How are we gonna impact social media? How are we gonna impact uh, media just broadly? And so I, I, I wanted to put that in there as well and say this. Yeah, go ahead, Dwayne. You're on mute, I'm sorry, dog. Press your, press your unmute button now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. There we go. Give, Try now. God, God bless. Thank go. you. Um, okay, so <laughs> uh, can you put that comment back up that, that every generation can learn from the decade oh, before? Yeah. Because I'm, so I'm a vocal music teacher. I teach grades fifth through eighth grade. And the first thing I do whenever they come in class is thing called bell work. So for bell work, each day what I've done is I've taken I've taken artists. Um, I have 160 um, different artists for the, the whole year. So each day to learn about an artist. Um, they come in, they see the artist picture, they see three facts about that artist, and then I find that I found a song that I put on a QR code. So they scan that code, they listen to it, and then they tell me why they like the song or why they hate the song. And so far, they've listened to all kinds of people, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, Destiny's Child, TLC, different people. And I've had like a pretty good mix of kids who like the song or, oh, this is on TikTok, or I recognize this from etc cetera, etc cetera. so this it is very important that those older generations do you know help us help us out because people we're listening we are listening and the kids under me they're listening too so mm -hmm. let me you ask know. let me ask kayla uh bring kayla back in right here so when we're talking about how you guys in your generation from uh, gen z as well as millennials are going to impact and shift culture because you guys have already been doing it anyway. Um, okay. I, one of the things that I really, truly love about Gen Z in particular is because you guys are so fearless and, you know, that can sometimes work to y'all's detriment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think in a lot of ways, it helps you more than it hinders you because there is a lot of less, there's a lot less fear. And like, what is more like, I think what is more appropriate than people who are not fearful, right? Because if you, in the faith space, it's all about our connectivity to God and faith and what that's about. Like we're, we preach faith very heavy. So I think in a lot of ways, y'all already embody that characteristic, even if it's not necessarily church oriented. But I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you, what do you think, what, what's your, per, what is your perspective on what we're talking about so far? Um, I feel as though, if it's more so of a mixture of people in the forefront, like younger people and then older people, both at the forefront, all generations will be more open to coming because I um, started singing recently, maybe the past four months at a church called Empower Faith LA. And the entire band is like young. We all, I went to 1500 Sound Academy as well. So all the band members are from 1500 Sound Academy and like we're all younger and then what I've noticed is like so many, so many more like young people are starting to come to church because the music that we're playing is still gospel, but it's more like upbeat. And then they see us singing every single Sunday at church. And then not to mention the pastor is 28 years old. So I think just having us in the forefront and as that example, um, just to show that you can have fun while still serving Christ. Um, I think that's, that's very important. Let's so, and I'm going to bring uh, Kyron in and Ronald, but I want to talk about this a little bit. I see Dwanique having some issues over there. <laughs> 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 but, um, you, I like what you said when you talked about the church that you're serving at, how they saw the importance of still showing that you can have fun, but at the same time, making sure that, you know, God is represented. Here's one of the misnomers that I, I will say, I think that I see a lot with the older generation. And Ronald, you alluded to this earlier too, when you talked about, it's about people's perception of what gospel is, right? And so I wanna be clear, I keep wanting to educate people on this. Gospel music is about the good news, the message of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the redemption and the hope of, Je of Jesus Christ, right? That's what it is. The gospel genre deals with music that takes that message and marries the two. So to me, you can't just limit gospel music to just come on and clap your hands if you love Jesus. You can, you just can't reduce it to that. 
Although those were the origins of gospel music. Do y'all feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so the so to my my mind, don't confuse the message with the styling. And that's what happens. So you'll say you'll hear a lot of older people say, and, and in some cases, some younger people who have, in my view, have been indoctrinated with that belief system, which is, oh, well, this music has got a, you know, a trap beat or whatever. And they automatically say, well, it's not gospel. No, the person is in the lyrical content is talking about Jesus all day. But you can't get past you hear a trap beat. And that's what's holding. That's what's hanging you up. And so I keep reminding people, don't let the stylistic expression make you think that this is not gospel. Is here's my here's my litmus test to everybody. When you're trying to judge if a song is gospel or not, the first thing is what is the content of what they're saying? Right? Like if it's the good news of Jesus Christ, if it's a message of redemption and hope um in Christ, then that is gospel music, regardless of how it sounds tonally, right? Or what kind of instrumentation is used, whether it's got rock influence or it's got a jazz influence, or it's got a hip hop influence, or R&B influence, right? Because remember, all music generated from gospel music. <laughs> this is why people say, well, it's the world, it's the devil. How? <laughs> no, the world or the secular people took our expressions and they're seeing it today. Did y'all see the Grammys this past year? Did y'all see how many gospel references were in the performances from when they were you they were there were a lot of performances using like the Hammond B3 organ, right? A lot of performances had choirs, mm -hmm. right? Because our mm -hmm. influence in gospel has always been prevalent, it's always been, been there, and all of these other genres were birthed from gospel music. So I just wanted to say, Kayla, I appreciate you that, that insight and you sharing that story about your church because I think a lot of people can learn those lessons. Quit trying to shut it out because you're not gonna stop the wave, baby. It's, it's, it's here. Gospel music is not just going to go back to your choir in the choir stand and y'all wearing them hot robes and ch fried chicken smelling in the back. Now, I personally have no problem with fried chicken smell in, in there because, you know, I'll be hungry and stuff and, you know, be kind of waiting for the service to be over so I can go and get me something. But anyway, so, <laughs> Ronald, I want to bring you back in and then I'm going to talk to Kyron. Okay. When it comes to the expression, and as you just heard me talk about the stylistic part of this, Mm -hmm. Do you think, do you agree with me that most people kind of get stuck on the style, the styling of the music and not hearing the message because they're too busy listening to the style? I think that's absolutely true. Some people. Um, and I'll give you a, an example. When Erica Campbell came out with um, I Love God, um, I saw so many like mixed reviews on social media. Like some people like, oh my gosh, this is the devil's music or she's like, unregenerate and you know blah, blah blah but like literally the things that she was saying like you know if if he come and i'm missing you know she's talking about the coming of the lord and wanting to be ready when the lord comes so uh, some people I, I think it's because we have ideas about like certain sounds of music that we automatically associate negative connotations to it or just because X artist who's very popular and well known they have this particular sound let's just use beyonce for an example um from a song from her renaissance album um i think uh if uh i'm trying to think of an artist um who's a, a good example uh current uh, hawthorne if she made um mm -hmm. a song with the same beat or a similar beat to um, the name of the song that's on your shirt, Derek, that I cannot think of right now. Really? Uh, <laughs> you won't break my soul. You won't break my soul. Um, you know, but if she talked about Jesus, like people would have a problem with it. They did the same thing to Karen Clark Sheard when she and um, Kier Sheard remade um, a song and had Missy Elliott in Jill, Jill remade Scott. Jill Scott's song. Like, um, but it was able to relate to an audience that they may not have otherwise reached. So when, sometimes when artists sample other artists' music, it allows them to be able to cross over to a different genre. Because I agree that if this is the gospel, the gospel is not meant to be contained in one particular genre or sound. I, 
unless I'm reading the wrong book, the Bible says to take the gospel into all of the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So surely there's diversity of sound to help us to reach cultures where, you know, the gospel can reach them in ways that it relates to them musically versus just the way that we think of it contextually in, in like black Christian culture. I think sometimes we think that we're the end all be all, but there's so much more outside of us. And God might, you know, God's sound through Dunique is going to be different than God's sound through Kyren. And so neither of them are wrong for how they express that sound. But I think we get so trapped in what we think the vehicle ought to look like to get to the destination that we stop the car and don't drive. And we end up hindering our process our, and our effectiveness to take the gospel to the world. That's what I think. My to God. Did y'all hear all that? Oh, I got some smart millennials and Gen Z folk on this thing. God, I just thank God for you. I thank God for you. Listen, but you said something, uh, really all of what you said I thought was poignant and, uh, and powerful. And so my question to y'all now is, now that you've seen essentially Gen Z and the millennial impact on music broadly, what do you think you guys can do as part of this advisory board to help us, the Avidity Awards, not only support and nurture this these varied expressions, because we've got, I'm telling y'all, when y'all come to the 8th Annual Avidity Awards, you got, you're going to hear everything on that stage from Christian hip hop. You're going to hear worship and 808s. You're going to hear a lot of 808s in one song. You're going to hear a lot of pop from B Slade's song and the song he's got with Robin McGee. You're going to hear the traditional choir sound with Arthur and Friends Community Choir. You're going to hear quartet. You're going to hear all of it. And my thought is to your point, you know, God is using every artist it, through how he gave them their interpretation of the message of, of Christ, right? And I think it's important to an Elton, I love Elton's, I keep going back to it, when he says, you can't go into all the world, reach diverse audiences of people and keep the sound of gospel music monolithic. I thought that was just, that's like one of the key phrases of the night, right? Because here's the thing, I, I, I always scratch my head when church people talk about they want to witness and win souls for Christ, but then they want to be monolithic in how they do that. Like, how how is it that you want to reach a diversity of people, but you're unwilling to have flexibility in the expression of sound that they're hearing, especially if that sound is what they relate to? Let me circle back to Kayla. Kayla, you said something that I just wanted to jump out my seat about because I've been preaching and saying this for forever. Gospel music, a lot of them are boring. They are. Now, I'm not a Gen Z -er or a millennial. I'm actually a Xenial. I'm Gen X. So, oh, and by the way, I just want to, I ain't mean to pop y'all bubble, but let me just tell y'all something. Y'all do know Gen X is considered the first millennials, but y'all be encouraged to know the law table. <laughs> well, I just want to let y'all know that. All right. So, <laughs> so, I said all that to say this. My point in saying that is to say this. When I'm on panels, like um, wh whether I'm doing like uh, showcase panels or whatever um, platforms I'm speaking on, even on Sundays in my clubhouse room, the Indie Artist Help Desk, I'm telling the artists in gospel especially, you, you have to understand, once you cross the lexicon into the commercial artist space, there is an entertainment value and aspect that comes along with being a recording artist. You, it's, it's, so it's not just that you are over here in your church singing praise and worship. You're now in a different setting. So you have to find the balance between using um, your gospel music and roots as the foundation of what you do as an artist, but also provide an entertainment aspect and component to that because that's what the industry demands. And if you're saying you're going to release music commercially and you want people to support and buy it, you can't do that without then giving them a reason to buy the song. Jesus can't be your only reason you want people to buy the song because there are tons of other artists already singing about Jesus. Right. So why do they need to why would they buy a single from you talking about Jesus when yours is boring? But Kirk Franklin over here, you know, doing the two step and sliding around the stage and jumping off the stage and he got on fly gear to make to boot. Like, if I just want to, I'm just saying, like, why are you inviting me to your live show, right? 
And you just gonna stand there and say, "Oh, let's just worship." No, sweetie, I worshiped this morning. Like it, when me, I was in the shower, me and the Lord had a real good time. I didn't come here to worship. I came here to to see what you're gonna do. You listen. You made me pay a fifty dollar ticket, huh? I done put on. I done got up out my bed, took a shower, put on my good glad rags, <laughs> got in my car, drove all the way across town. And pay fifty dollars to watch you worship. The devil is alive. You better get up there and two step or something. Slide to the left. Slide to the right. You better crisscross. You better give me something. <laughs> I'm just saying. And so I think artists like Kirk Franklin. The reason why I think he's the go-to gospel and why his his career has been so legendary and, and remains so. What almost forty years later, is because Kirk. I think Kirk is one of the quintessential examples of understanding how to marry messaging with, with gospel and entertainment and, and, and they don't have to be mutually exclusive. So in other words, they're not either or, but they're both. And go ahead. Dwayne. Can you hear? Oh, we can't hear you. Hold on. There you go. How about now? Thank you so much. No, I, I'm glad you said that because I have a question because yeah. my motto, I don't know if you got to look at my thing at Rhythm and Gospel, but my motto is winning souls of Jesus Christ through all aspects of entertainment. And I know some people will have an issue with that because I use the word entertainment, but how do you guys feel on people within the gospel industry entertaining as well? Because I believe that, yes, you can still minister but you can also have an entertainment side of it as well because people don't want to be bored and some people don't want to just stick to the same old pass me not i love pass me not but i'm just saying some people we want to be entertained too let me so how do y'all feel about that let me flip it and i want them and i definitely want Kyron and all y'all to get in on this but let me flip it and ask it this way is your god or your messaging or the gospel so weak that it can't penetrate through someone sliding to the left or sliding to the right <laughs> like is your is your anointing that diluted that it won't be reaching people because you have lights and you've got video screens and you got strobes and pars and blinders going on stage like i'm just i just want to know like these are the questions no, so I, I, I agree so I go agree. ahead kyron jump in here what what say you okay is the anointing Ooh. week what's up it's it's oh i i, I have so much to say <laughs> okay so boom start what you just said okay my perfect example of using kurt franklin look at how he pushed the message of the gospel but also kept us focused and entertained with using maverick city leandria johnson melvin chris Bell, and wh who was that zakari <laughs> That was that the was one fun. that clip that went viral quickly. He was still telling us that God has everything that we need, but also keeping us focused on what he's saying. Because let's just be honest, and I'm one of them. My attention span ain't it ain't the longest. It is not the longest at all. So after so long. I zone out a lot. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. So it's like, why get mad when you have people who attention spans are not always as long as others? So that's just like saying, okay, perfect example to go back to the previous question. Look at how gospel rap has circulated back and how it has went so far into mainstream now because at first it was oh you can't combine rap and gospel and all this that and the third i got a couple playlists with a couple uh gospel rap trap songs that you know keep me motivated because like you say if i'm worshiping don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with worship nothing wrong with worship i'm a good worshiper i love a good i love one of those moments but <laughs> you still i can worship but what's gonna keep me up in movement so let's just say some people that work out okay that trap song is gonna knock out 45 minutes 
because you're still but it's not only is it entertaining you but you're also remembering you're remembering what's what's being said in the song and then just think about it okay it said one thing that stuck out to you now i done sat down i done opened up my bible and now i'm like okay that song caught my attention caught mm-hmm. your attention i love it and it's it's th- that's simply what that's what the different ways of breaking down gospel is doing is catching everyone's attention. I want to read something real quick, and then I'm gonna to go to Dwanique. Um, Elton says, "Entertainment equals enter plus containment." To entertain means to lead captive the attention of an audience. That can be done in many ways, and not always in negative ways. Yes, Elton. Doc. Listen, somebody give me a shout sheet. Elton, you are <laughs> killing it tonight in these comments. Yeah. I'm oh loving everything. God. And for y'all to know, like Elton is like my resident Derek Whisperer. Like when I talk to him, it's like I feel so much smarter and enlightened. Like everybody needs an Elton in your life. You need to call that person. I, you know, I don't know who it is for y'all, but like for me, is Elton is definitely one of those people. Like he has a way of recentering the way I think about stuff. And my point, and the reason I bring this up is to say this um, to what Kyron was saying as well. We keep trying to make stuff mutually exclusive. Like worship is exclusive from entertainment, right? Um, and it's not. Go ahead, Wani. Go ahead. No, I'm, you just preaching. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> right? Because, because come on now, we're not just right here. Yeah, right here too. Like I'm, I'm gonna tell you something. I believe this is happening. There are gatekeepers. I think that are on the gospel side of the industry that are are trying to contain this these expressions, these newer expressions of music, and just like anything else, the horse has already left the barn, in my opinion. So you're not going to stop it. You may be able to, you know, kind of keep it down a little bit. But what's starting to happen is like one of the things there's a consortium going on right now of some individuals and myself. And we're looking at purchasing actual physical radio stations. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you now, like if you go listen to my station, All Access Gospel Radio, you're going to hear some of everything on my station. Uh, that's aagospelradio.com and <laughs> y'all go check it out god bless all right but when you turn we love it on a good free promotion we love a good free promotion mm-hmm, amen, mm-hmm, amen amen mm-hmm, amen amen Come on. so when you go to when you go to aagospelradio.com and listen to all access gospel radio you're going to hear um the agape music group you're going to hear like lakia mm-hmm. stokes and juanique you're going to hear these artists and but you're also going to hear quartet you're going to hear some choir you're going to hear all of it because to me all of it has a voice all of it has Mm -hmm. an audience and what i love about all of you guys is that you guys represent where we're going and i want to circle this back to even the avidity awards i believe that you guys and those that will come on and join this board even after today will be very integral and important to help us push what we're doing further push the reaches, push the boundaries of what people thought. And what I really want y'all to do is I want y'all to be like the ambassadors showing people that gospel music is not a monolith. Like Elton mentioned in his comment, you know, we are not a monolithic group of people and we can love Jesus. We can be saved, but we also like to go to parties. We also like, right? Like we like to go to the movies and have a good time. We go to theme parks. We, we live life. And what, uh, to me, I think what this can be is like a microcosm of a larger movement. Um, and that's what I want to see with Next Gen. I want to hear from, who have we heard from in a little bit? Kayla. Yes, it's your girl, Kayla. And we're, and we're actually getting ready to wrap up. So in our final moments, I do want to go around because I don't want to keep y'all too much longer. Um, I want to wrap around, go around and hit all of you on, on your final thoughts about this topic, about how millennials and Gen Z can be on the forefront of helping us move this culture forward. What would you say in just like your closing words to everybody watching? Um, well, I actually learned a lot throughout this conversation because I I haven't thought this deeply about this topic. I just kind of unconsciously do things. So if I like it and if it aligns with my spirit, I just do it. So this is my first time like really digging deep into this topic and um i think already we're making a change within the community um by doing what we're doing right now um so yeah i think yeah i learned a lot this conversation well 
I appreciate that. And I look forward to using what you're doing in uh, your day job, if you will, to help us move forward with the Avidity Awards and the brand and all that good stuff. So let, y'all, let's give some snaps up to Kayla. Thank you, Kayla. Kayla, you. Kayla. And, and, and Kayla. on my side, she went to one of the greatest HBCUs. <laughs> I love Kills it. it. <laughs> all right, so Ronald, uh, yeah. no, I'm gonna go to Kyron. Kyron, tell us your final words to this discussion. What would you like to leave our audience with tonight before we get out of here? Like, what are your final thoughts on this subject? It is okay with being different, but still loving the same God. Mm. Come on, Bishop. Right. <laughs> and I say that because you're talking to someone that loves choir music, quartet, worship, trap, rap, R&B. So, you know, I, I love music as a whole. Mm -hmm. And that's with everything rock and roll. Listen, I I love a little good emo, little sound to every hey hey hey. I, long story. That's besides the point. But I I used to teach. I taught from 2016 to 2019. I always told my kids that it's important to make your own relationship. Mm -hmm. And I've always give them different music. Because you know, you never know what type of sound that they like. So it's okay with being different. Mm -hmm. As long as we're all still worshiping the same God, that's all that matters. I love it. Woo! Man, oh man, oh man. Mm, mm, mm. I feel good in churchy. I feel a millennial churchy in my. <laughs> I, 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 I love Bob Shata and my hondo. All right. Dr. Ronald J. I am very rich, McCray. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he gonna get me for that. I so, am. So, what are your your final uh, what are your final thoughts on this topic, and what would you like to leave with our audience tonight? Um, my final thoughts would be like um, Kayla mentioned. I was also a student in this conversation. Um, I think it's important to listen before speaking, and so I. Um, gained a lot of insight tonight. You know, I am a millennial, um, but I don't necessarily know the perspective of Gen Z other than what is told to me. So thank you all so much for your vulnerability. Um, and um, I think that this was a very beneficial conversation for uh, consumers of music, um, for those who are believers, um, those who have interests or aspirations <coughs> of going into music, those, you know, and any you know, involvement of the music industry. Great conversation. And I think um, what I would like to leave with the audience is it sounds to me that through different like threads of this conversation, that uh, what is necessary to advance um, the reach and the impact of gospel music is for the generation before us to extend their hand and then the generation that is uh, the millennials and younger to extend their hand backward. I'm sorry, back toward them to take one another by the hand and to be what um, the Lord called us to be. There are strengths that the older generation has, biblically speaking, and then there are strengths that the younger has. And we work as a cohesive unit to be the effective body when we work together. But if we're divided and we're separate and we can't seem to get on the same page, then you know we don't make the traction that we could so what i would like to submit to the audience is for all of us to look internally um even beyond just music um, because i think this whole conversation about um you know us needing to be a team rather than at odds with one another is an issue in christendom at large um, and i think that if we can marry one another because we are the the bride of christ you know um then i think that we can be um, all god is calling us to be in this last day Somebody Come on, get the shout sheet. I done told y'all go get the shout sheet. Every, every response. <laughs> like Jesus. Hold on, I got you. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm on the way. I got mine. Come on, I got you. You made me get out my windshield wiper praise. I got the windshield wiper, Lord Jesus. But listen, no, thank you, Ronald. That was that was dope for real. I, no, but seriously, I know y'all. Y'all, that's just me. Uh, my personality is very like I'm very jovial. I like to have fun. Um, 
But um, those of you know me personally, you know, I'm, I'm very serious. I have a very serious side and business side, but I think you have to be balanced. And one of the things that I'm at 44 uh, years old and as a Xenial Gen X, now at this stage in my life, no, I'm just, I just got to let y'all know because you know we were the first. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. No, but, I'm just... <laughs> but no, but seriously, um, the thing I've been thinking about as I've gotten over 40 was, okay, now I have a lot more balanced perspectives in my thinking. <clears throat> Where it used to be, I used to be one side or the other. Now I'm kind of like, you see there's a lot more nuance in life. And, my, and I'm saying all that to say this, I'm learning the importance of balance. And that's something I'm really working on a lot. So that balance is my spiritual life, but also I have a natural life, I have a natural side. Um, right. And I think that can be useful when it comes to striking the balance between to what Ronald was talking about, the millennial and younger generation having a hand to reach up to and then the older generations having a hand to reach back to and work together. Everybody has a voice, in my opinion. There is no right or wrong expression when it comes to gospel music, but there are certain aspects that will reach some that won't reach others. There's traditional that won't reach some younger generations and then there's some younger music that's or the music that's out today that may not reach older generation but to me all of it has its use it's just like all of us all of us have an audience of people that i believe god has called us to reach an impact in our various areas right and i think sometimes we get overly wrapped in wanting um, validation and affirmation from people who are not a part of our audience artists hello i'm talking to you right now y'all ain't i'm preaching better than y'all saying amen so i'm telling you <laughs> as even as artists right because first of all, let, can we just say, I don't know how in the world y'all, some of y'all don't like Beyonce, because to me, that's just absolute blasphemy, but okay. But please I understand. Please don't open it, though, please. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. You see, I was going to keep my mouth shut, because that's going to be a long, that's going to be three hours. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. But my, but my point, but here's my point. Even Beyonce, who has been held by every major pu publication across the globe, has said that this particular um, tour has been her best one. And with all the millions of people that have gone to see this tour and love her music, there are still some that don't like her music. They don't like her as an entertainer. She is clearly this generation's Michael Jackson, without question, okay? She is a mega pop star. I said all that to say this, as an artist, you guys, those of you that are artists on here, like Kayla Sings, I know Dwanique is an artist for sure, and, and so is Ronald. You guys are gonna have your audience of people. You know, my music is pretty pretty different it's different <laughs> and i want you to lean into that so y'all hear me i'm talking to you all on this panel but i'm also talking to you watching this lean into what makes you different i made a post yesterday i think it was about why i'm so glad i'm so different and how i do things differently my approach has been differently there's a reason why in only eight years this show has already got national and international appeal and notoriety because I'm not afraid to push the envelope and I'm not afraid to introduce other <coughs> people that the church said is not welcome. Because that's the true essence of Christ himself. Don't don't y'all get me to preach it now, McCray. You know, I'm trying not to preach. I'm trying to let y'all get off of here and get you off of here. But anyway, so I want to say that. But last but certainly not least, let's hear from Dwani. Dwani, what are your final messages to us tonight? Well, I don't really, I don't, I believe that we should not close the door on the topic. And so I wanted to suggest something. If we could make some type of hashtag, like, I don't know, hashtag avidity gen, gen Z or something, hashtag gen something. We're going to come up with something, y'all. And if you guys have questions or something else that you want to throw in the conversation, hashtag us, tag us, tag Derek, and let's keep the conversation going so that way we, we can keep growing as not just in the music industry but also within the award show and within christ i think that's important so i want to keep this conversation open and going yeah so just so y'all know i do plan on having a, a segment in the main show taping where i want to hear from y'all i want the people to know you guys are there that next gen i don't want next gen to just kind of be like some kind of entity sitting in the dark and y'all coming up with ideas like some think tank like you be mm -hmm. think tank, but I also want you visible. I want you, I want next gen to be a prominent part of our show and a prominent yeah. part of what we're offering 
to the world um, through gospel music. So I, I think that's valuable, but go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. It, it, no, I'm no, looking. you're good. I was just telling like those of you watching, like if you have, if there was something that you wanted to hit the nail on the head or something that you wanted us to tackle during this conversation at us so we can dive in with you guys. We want to keep the conversation going. And I would like to thank everyone for coming on with us and spending time with us because I think this conversation was much needed and important. And I'm not trying to sound like the mother of the church and nothing, so I'm gonna be quiet. But I really thank you guys, truly. Thank you so much. I really, really believe in the Avidity Awards. I really believe in Derek. And I think that I'm, I'm really not trying to sound churchy, y'all. But God is really about to take this and he's about to take this whole thing into a new stratosphere. So, okay, I'm done talking. We love a good mother uh, <laughs> closing remark, first lady. We love you was a good. good you was the lady. mother. Of the board. Yes, yes, Dwanik, you are the mother of the advisory board. Will there be one? <laughs> okay, now the, the Dwanik. Let's see. The only way. The only way this is complete. You got to seal this though. So, like, and every good church <laughs> member got to have some good hard candy. <laughs> In they person. I ain't got I ain't got no strawberries and no butterscotches. <laughs> listen, <laughs> I just, listen. I, no, 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 no. See, you this is new school. See, see, this is listen. next gen. So you know, I'm, I'm talking about some Jolly Ranchers. You know, you can have you know, or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you can have something like that. You know what I'm saying? But um, y'all, I ain't gonna lie. My the students in the school, even the ones who ain't my students, come to my class for Jolly Ranchers and candy. <laughs> It makes I know one it thing. Makes it, it makes I know one thing. Do I need, you better not roll up to the Avidity Awards without no candy in your purse because I'm gonna revoke your mother title. You are a mother. You are the I'm church gonna have mother. a snack. I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a snack. Okay. I ain't even gonna speak when I come to you. I'm just going straight to the bag. What, what we got in you? What's in you? That's fine. <laughs> oh, right. mm-hmm. So I so again I, I just love you guys. Um thank That's you hilarious. all so much for giving us your time tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your sacrifices <clears throat> that you're making to be a part of Next Gen and um you know ex, uh, you know using your expertise, your skills and your knowledge and putting that to work for this. I truly believe that the Lord's going to bless you guys for your efforts doing this. I really mean that. Not just because it's helping us but because you are helping others. As I tell my executive board every week, I tell them this show is bigger than me. Yeah, I'm the leader of it. Um, and it's bigger than us as a board. But it's really about every artist that felt marginalized, that felt unheard, that felt that, you know, no one loved them or felt like they weren't good enough to be on a big stage. That's why we are doing our level best to give you the maximum experience that weekend when you come to the Avidity Awards. That's why, by far, we have the largest production budget of any independent gospel show. It ain't even close. Wow. And it's because I believe that you guys deserve it. I believe that you deserve television recognition. You deserve to be in press releases on major media. Like, you guys deserve that. And so, as long as there's breath in my body, this is what we're going to be doing at the Avidity Awards. And... Ultimately, one of my visions is to start getting when y'all are seen on our stage that major brands like Adidas and Nike Hallelujah. start calling you for endorsements. <laughs> Wait a minute, Lord Kayla. Kayla. I was going to say to Kayla. My phone is bad. <laughs> but look, Karen and went. I had a whole fit. <laughs> okay, I'm back, y'all. I'm back. I'm back. So, Anyway, so uh, so that's one of the visions that I have, that major publications like People, Time, and Essence magazines will do profiles on what we're doing at Avidity. So y'all hang in there with us. Let's do something. Let's continue to do something special. I think we're already on the, we're already on fire with this. I really do. So yeah. let's, let's make it pop. Let's make it do what it do. Okay. In my final, final, final words, I want to talk about why we, what we've been talking about all night. The Avidity Awards, all right? So the 8th Annual Avidity Awards, you guys, it's the biggest night in independent gospel music happening October 12th through the 15th. We have an entire weekend of events kicking off on Thursday, October 12th with our Masquerade Sneaker Ball. Let me tell y'all something. It's going to be lit. This ain't your, this ain't your church sneaker ball. Uh-uh. I don't want nobody messing with me in these streets. No, I'm just playing. I- <laughs> 
But um, so your tickets for that are only twenty dollars, you guys. So if you're gonna be in New Orleans with us on Thursday night, definitely get your tickets to the Masquerade Sneaker Ball. You can get them on our website at theavidityawards.com. Yes, that is theavidityawards.com. I'm gonna put that banner up there so y'all can see it and go over there and get your tickets. Okay. Um, then I'm click after right down there. Mm -hmm, there it is right there mm -hmm. all right so then um right after the masquerade ball the same night y'all we are gonna do the shed series hosted by morgan turner oh my god woo, woo. if you do not know who morgan turner is let me just tell you a couple pieces of his resume multiple years as md for pastor john p key uh current producer for Sicardi Cortez, the uh, Sicardi's most recent mm -hmm. album that just came out and that just won three stellar awards and nominated for, I believe, two Dove Awards. Morgan Turner produced that project and he is our music director for the main show. Come so on, brother Morgan. He is also hosting that musician and singer shed. It's going to be amazing. Listen, if you want to be a part it's going I'm telling y'all, it's going to be a lit experience. Definitely go to the website and go register. I'll register. And it's free. You know, black folks love free stuff now. Right? <laughs> so come on down, y'all. Come on and be a part of the musicians shed, right? Um, go ahead and do that. Okay, so then on Friday morning, you guys, we're gonna have the um independent gospel <laughs> Hall <Week, laughs> of Fame breakfast. <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm gonna tell you like this, Robin. If you wanna leave, hey. Do you boo? If you want to bring the Bible to the ball or not, it don't really matter. Just, just, just bring it on your phone. Do, do you boo? And, and <laughs> right. If you bring a physical copy, please make sure that the the cover matches your your shoes or your dress. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> make it an accessory. Make it an accessory. Mm -hmm. So on Friday morning um, at ten o'clock is going to be our Independent Gospel Music Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Uh, we are inducting some powerhouses in the music industry and radio. We've got uh, Tracy Bethea of iHeartRadio, Dr. Liz Black from New York. We've got Edwin the Chef Wright from Charleston, South Carolina, program director and radio. Y'all artists, y'all need to be taking note of who, all these people. Mm -hmm. Get your stuff played on the radio in the name of Jesus. All right. Um, hey, Roger Purvis, Jesus. our friend Roger Purvis, who is uh, program director at WLLV in Louisville, Kentucky. We've got Talisa Stinson. Now, Talisa Stinson is a multiple 30-year vet work with everybody from the Mississippi Mass Choir to the Cantons, you name it. Everybody in between. Mm -hmm. We're honoring her. And then Roger Willis, who's easily mastered probably half of the songs you know in gospel radio over the last 10 years or more, is going to be honored at the um, Hall of Fame brunch. Then on Friday night, it is the pre-show. Ooh-hoo-wee! Mighty God. The pre-show. Here's the flyer. I'm going to put it up. Bam! Mm -hmm. Woo! All right, y'all. Right no. <laughs> this is hosted by Justin Rufus. Y'all is going to be our show host. Like, for those of y'all that know, I know a lot of y'all may not know who Justin Rufus is, but let me tell you something. He is a dynamic host. He is hilarious. We're going to have a wonderful time. He's going to host his tail off. I already know it. So he's going to be our host, y'all. This is on Friday, October 13th at uh, 7 o'clock. All right. Now, we got Naja Scott and Divine Anointing Choir. We got Pastor Jay Reed from right there in New Orleans. When I tell y'all, Jay is some kind of singing fool. Lord have mercy. Jesus. Then we got our own right there in the middle. Uh-huh. 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 Y'all see your picture right and, there. And you see me, Brian. You see me. She there. Mm -hmm. Then we got Joel <laughs> Jones and 3MC. He's got a great choir there in the Baton Rouge area. Then we got Malik Atkins and Company. Also another great act. We got Norris J, y'all, right here from the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um dynamic rapper y'all i'm telling you he's killing then one of my clients soup is going to be another great uh christian hip-hop artist is going to be there we got malik oliver we got sib life our own advisory Amen. board member Amen. reverend dr Bishop. ronald j i am very rich uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> It's going to be singing that night. I'm excited to hear him sing. Um, and then we've got Lisa Bellamy. We got Micah E. Clark. And then we got Praise and Worship, y'all. We're going to have Praise and Worship at the. Now, we're, gonna, we're not going to have it at the main show, but at the pre show, we're going to have Praise and Worship by okay. our very own Mr. Willie Moore Jr. Y'all, he's another dynamic singer, great praise and worship leader. So it's going to be a Willie! great time. Now, listen, y'all, red carpet <laughs> that night starts at 6 p.m. The pre show begins at 7 o'clock. And guess what, y'all? The pre-show pre tickets only $20. Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah. You can't beat that. So y'all scan that QR code right there on your screen. Just scan it right now, and it will take you to get your tickets. Y'all do that, okay? And then after this, y'all, on that night, we're going to do our pre-show bowling after party immediately following the pre-show. How many of y'all can bowl? I'm telling you right now, I'm not playing no games. If I wasn't injured, I just want y'all to know that y'all would all lose. Oh, man. Well, the Lord said sit on down, sis. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, sit down and be encouraged. I'm the so Lord, uncompetitive, I might still beat y'all. The Lord gonna preserve you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be wise this way around. The last time I wasn't too wise, hurt myself. Be wise, now. daughter. Be wise, mother. Be wise. Be wise. Sit down with your hard candy, <laughs> huh? God bless you. I'm gonna need, need a little snacky snack while I'm out there. I'm gonna just clothes. I'm gonna just chaperone. Amen. Okay, you chaperone. So anyway, that's all on Friday. Then on Saturday, y'all, it's that's the big day. It's the biggest night in independent gospel music. Our purple carpet. Mm. Purple. Come on, Saints. I'm, I'm preaching, Saints. French, y'all hear me, Saints? I say Saints. Do you hear me what I say, Saints? It's y'all don't want to miss this. All right. So listen, y'all, our purple carpet. Oh, first of all, let me say this. I forgot to say this. Duanique, y'all, is also going to be hosting the pre-carpet. I am. Pre-show red carpet. Woo! Along Woo! with Chantel Jones. There. Come and talk to me. So y'all go talk to her. She's going to be real curt and stuff. All right. Oh, and then on Saturday, our purple carpet on Saturday night, y'all, let me tell you something. It's going to be all the way lit. Hosted by Michael Lee and Lakia Stokes, y'all. <laughs> it's going to be so good. Y'all come on out. On Saturday, October the 14th at 3 p.m. is when the uh, Purple Carpet event starts. All I'm going to say, all I'm going to say, y'all not going to see that carpet until y'all get there on Saturday, but y'all not going to see it before. I'm just telling y'all, you're not going to see it before. <laughs> Are we going to say, ooh. You're going to say, ooh, this is nice. I like your this. Oh, this, 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 this don't want no roaches or nothing. You're going to be like, ooh, this is noise. <laughs> like, oh, like, this is beautiful. What is that, velvet? <laughs> 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 so it's gonna be great, y'all. So come on out, the purple carpet. Uh, we have great Hi. hosts, Micah and um, Lakia are both very fun, energetic. So life's of the party. Okay, and then at six o'clock, sharp. Somebody say sharp. Sharp. Now I don't know where you've been before, <laughs> totally. and I don't know what other shows you've been to before. Uh -huh. Around here, uh -huh. between Normandy and West End. Twenty twenty twenty. <laughs> Oh, my bad. I, I was. I, I, hey, I'm sorry. I, was I, got, I got. I got caught up. But uh, I, I was just, right there with you. Yeah. Uh huh. But no. Just know we're starting on time at six o'clock because we are taping this for television. So we are going to start WPT. on time. White people's time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Roll up late to this one if you want to, sis. God bless. I don't know what to tell you. Be encouraged. You're gonna be outside. You're gonna be outside. We're gonna be outside trying to get in. Amen. So y'all be on time. All right. But this. This one! Da, 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 da. Bow, 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 wow, wow, wow. Oh. Hosted oh, by the incomparable two time uh -huh. Grammy nominated, uh -huh. six time Emmy Award winner, <coughs> uh -huh. six time Stellar Award winner, uh -huh. the incomparable uh -huh. B Slay. Oh, it's going to be hosting and somebody say and and, and, and he's going to be performing mm. y'all don't want to miss it. it's going to be ultra lit i'm telling y'all right now y'all he got dancers like i ain't gonna mm. tell y'all everything because i don't want to tell y'all everything y'all just gotta be dancers. here wait a minute now they got you dancers. shouldn't even told him that you shouldn't i shouldn't have, i knew i shouldn't have told him that i shouldn't have told him but that's all right well i'm gonna he give him a y'all excuse him but that's all right. They don't know. They don't know what they're gonna be dancing to. They don't know what they're gonna be. I doing. hope gospel. <laughs> <laughs> I hope gospel, and not none of that secular music that the old told me come back. <laughs> Shut up, Kyron. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm, God, matter of fact, God, when you find my that's what you got. That is God, a I'm All right, so y'all, we have Robin McGee performing. Oh, such Anthony. a fan. Yes, Anthony such Hall. 
Lakia Stokes, Rayshon, ooh, Rayshon Anderson. My, that's my brother. When they, you know him. Yes. The no. Agape Music Group, Adrian Butler, Casme, Arthur and Friends Community Choir, Talasia, Anthony Jefferson, Anissa, the exciting Holy Sons, gonna bring us that quartet <laughs> along with McFadden. And then we got our emerging artist stage with Nakia LaShawn and Danielle Stevens, y'all. Listen, again, Purple Carpet goes out at 3 o'clock. Main show and TV taping starts at 6 o'clock. Y'all scan that QR code and get your tickets. Get your tickets. It's going to be a time. It's going to be a time. A will be had. We and then finally, on Sunday at 1 o'clock is the Indie Artist Help Desk Masterclass Series. I don't have a flyer up yet for that, but let me tell y'all. It's all right. Listen, that's, that class is going to be amazing. Y'all, we got some really great guests. One of our guests is Roger Willis. He is doing a whole class on mastering. Every Listen, every artist is... Every who? <laughs> every artist is... I just got one question. How you spell it? A-R-T-I-S-T-S-T-S-T. <laughs> It's. Okay. Uh, all right. Put that down. Don't worry about put that in your urban dictionary. Amen. Amen. No, but seriously. No, for real. This class, he is doing a deep dive in the mastering process. A lot of artists know what generally what mastering is, but he's I'm telling you, he's diving deep into what mastering is so y'all know what it is. You need to be there. And this is free. This whole day is free. All right. And then uh you know, of course, me and Micah are going to do what we do and you know, help the artists with positioning, artist positioning, how to get seen, how to get noticed, how to manage your social media, all of that. We're doing all of that for you, boo. Like, we're doing all that. So y'all need to be there on Sunday, okay? So go to that website once again mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as theavidityawards.com, okay? There you go. It, it right there. If you look down at your bottom part of your screen, you will see it right there. It's nice and purple. The white rice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, on that, so on that note, everybody, thank you guys again for tuning in. We appreciate you so much. I look forward to seeing what this wonderful board is going to do. And thank y'all for being here. <coughs> Dwanique Smith, Kyron Kyles, Ronald J. I am very rich. Uh -huh. McCray, and then Miss Kayla, say your name again because it's so fancy. <laughs> Kayla Lessier. Lessier? Lessier. Yes, Lessier. Lessier. Like Kayla Lessier. Okay, I got it. I got it. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, uh, excuse me, Miss Lessier, would you like to break the phone? <laughs> Do I need to have my pinky up when I speak to you? Would you like to have some great pool? Pardon me, my name is Lessier. <laughs> Lessier. Yo, I'm here to party. <laughs> Lessier. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> no, but I love you guys. Thank you guys so oh, much man. for being here tonight. And we will talk to y'all <laughs> soon. Y'all going to get them tickets. Y'all get them now. I told y'all they right there at the bottom. It's that if you're a business white owner, ride. you need to put you a, you need to, if you're a business owner, you need to put you a, a ad in our program magazine. The, the mm -hmm. launch of the yeah. Affinity Indie Magazine. Somebody say okay. amen. Yeah. Let me also amen. say, amen. again, I hate to be the, I hate to be the first lady. But let me also say, if the Lord pressed on you to, to sow into this, sow into this. Oh, you're obedient. But that's all. What you ask, you ask how, how you want to know how you do? I'm sure you could drop the cash app or something. Huh? Oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you want to sow some seed, children? <laughs> you can see how it's empty. So we, we, we take all good donations. We, think, we take things that fold and roll. And to go, we take, we take everything for hot chicks, baby. That's out. We don't take those, and we, we take food stamps and EBT cards. Hello, and, like we, and section I eight. Some of y'all that get eight hundred dollars and only got one child. And, uh, <laughs> hello, what state y'all in? Something. You are so crazy, man. We got we got a good old basket, and if you don't like these, I got the little old one with the little little carpet at the bottom. Mm -hmm. We got those too. <laughs> Amen. On that note, so y'all, this is the cover for the Avidity Indie Magazine. This is our launch print edition we're launching in October next month. Mm -hmm. And you see it's got Agape Music Group on the cover. Um, I, des I designed this cover, by the way. Yeah. Come on, you, you did that. You did that. that. You did that. 
I designed this uh this magazine cover. We but love anyway. a black man that wear a lot of hats. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, yeah. We, we're not gonna get off here dealing with Kaiser. <laughs> We, we got to go. Listen, if you guys want to advertise in, in the program book, artists, I encourage you, if you have a single coming out, if you have one already out, if you have a book out, right? If you want to promote your business, you do credit. If you do credit. I mean, I'm not, saying I'm, gonna be your, I'm not saying I'm going to be your client, but I'm just saying, you know, somebody might see your <laughs> ad and say, hey, you know what? I want you to do my credit. Not <laughs> fraud, though. Not fraud, Buki. Not fraud. <laughs> Buki. Not fraud. <laughs> Cause you're going to jail. You <laughs> <do the time. laughs> but don't forget though, we are taking donations. Hallelujah. <laughs> This is so silly. I gotta go. So thank, <laughs> thank you guys again. For <laughs> I'm just gonna end it. I gotta be done. All right, y'all. We'll, we'll see y'all. Bye. Bye. <laughs>